Konnichiwa folks, it's Kisato Brown Hook here. Um, this is a video two of my super budget bushcraft or 72 hours bug out ish kit. Uh, I thought I'd do it, refilm it because my previous time the lighting was very poor at the time and my camera was having some technical difficulties, technology as usual. So I um, thought I'd get down to it. Um, this is my new bushcraft look. Uh, well, I'll show the top hat and everything a little bit later on in this video, but I thought we'd quickly shoot this video first and then show you the other goodies I picked up along the way. A lot of it was freebies and a lot of it was just buying lying around the home or just quick bargains at $2 stores or uh, Salvation Army store. So let's have a look and stay with me guys and I'll be back in a second. Bonjour folks and welcome back. Now here's some of the items I got. Here's a quick look at them. Um, these are just all the items that I filmed during the original video, but I forgot to, well, I forgot to record them properly, obviously, and I had difficulties at the time with lighting, as I mentioned before. So here are the original items I filmed for the video. I have a few more items, but I think I'll show these ones first. Um, so if you bear me with me in mind, we'll get right to it. Okay, so first up, I got an Ocean Pack dry bag. Now I got this off Trade Me. Uh, I believe it was for ten dollars. So I bought three of them. Um, it's a redundant container. Um, used to supply and um, put your emergency supplies in, or um, your clothing, perhaps things things of that nature. So, and you can also use it to. Um, Bore water in with hot rocks. There's a couple YouTube videos on YouTube to do such things. Um, so it's incredibly handy to have in a survival scenario or bushcrafting or just emergency preparedness in general. Containers are king. They're always king. Great to have. And I learned that the hard way. Um, done a hike recently and yeah, didn't have enough containers on me or vessels to hold things in. Those are important things to have. So. Clarify, yep, containers are king, they're great to have, 10 bucks, 5 litre, thick wall, great deal, can't go wrong. Okay, next thing is the file. This is a two-way file. My other video, video 3, has a four-way file in Rasp. Um, this was just a cheapie just to do my, um, my hatchet, sorry, with that. Um, to give it an edge because it's a new uh, hatchet and needs an edge put onto it. So I ground it down with that and it works like a charm. 12 bucks, can't go wrong. I got that from David's Emporium. Some of the other stuff I got here are from David's Emporium in Hamilton as well. Uh, like the kilt pins. Kilt pins, you can use these for uh, emergency repairs, emergency repair on your straps or your backpack to um, fashioning some sort of poncho out of a. Um, a wool blanket perhaps, so uh, they're handy to have those. Now the fishing equipment. I got the beak hooks. More beak hooks, more beak hooks. As you can tell. And some sinkers. Uh, the brand is Maxi Strike. The sinkers uh, were five bucks. The other two, oh three, sorry, three. The other way for sick. The other three packs were two dollars each. And these are high carbon steel. You can drive sparks off it with a ferro rod. It does actually work. So it's it's a multifunctional item in itself. Um, so if I need to go survival fishing or recreational fishing for that instance, um, it, it's it's a hook, but it's also um, can be used uh, alternatively like a knife to start a fire. So it's another great alternative to have high carbon steel hooks. Can't go wrong there. Two bucks each, five dollars for sinkers. Can't go wrong. Speaking about fishing, I got this, uh, bring it up to you guys for a sec, third generation geranium 15 pound test line, it's 300 meters, 0.25 millimeters, that was five dollars, just for that um, line, comes in its little reel, so it'll be great for hand fishing, uh, recreational hand fishing, survival hand fishing, or um, yeah, just in general, fishing to acquire, you know, attain meat sources as such, so it's great to have. Fire starter. This fire starter here was $2.49 off Trade Me. Um, handles, I don't know if you guys are aware, but handles on fire starters, no matter 
what the brand is most likely will come off um, I've rarely seen an actual fire start or flint rods so ferro rods with handles that don't come off most of them come off so just pull them off straight away guys you don't need them just chuck some duct tape around it you can use the duct tape as an extender for your flame um, so it's multifunctional in itself aluminum foil now aluminum foil does it have its function yes it does it can be used for thermal conductivity it can be used to line um, uh, a shelter it's similar to like a emergency blanket perhaps um, as its thermal dissipation and heat reflection um, you can use it as waterproof sealant vapor barrier it's thermally conductive as I just mentioned and it's UV resistant so it's multifunctional in that purpose and it can be used to repair stuff now the problem is it's since it's aluminum and since it's four it is quite weak um, so that's the only bad disregard in that sense cloth tape it's an upgrade to our PVC tape 1250 and that is 25 foot roll um, so that's not too bad you can get bigger rolls 100 foot rolls um, there's a bit too much to carry you m might want to carry 100 foot of cordage perhaps here but not 100 foot of tape that's just way too much to have 25 foot for a three day um, couple overnighters or three day survival kit or bushcraft kit or whatever you want to call it these days so many people have interchangeable names um, but yeah, uh, for two dollars fifty, can't go wrong. Hundred percent cotton shirt. Can use it obviously in winter time. Cotton's great to have in the winter time. Summer. Do not wear cotton in the summer if you're out in the bush or you're outside. It sucks. You're going to sweat a lot. The problem with cotton is the sweat is retained, and um, that's how you get sweat stains on your armpits. Uh, for those folks that don't know, I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. Um, so, yeah, obviously you can wear this, but obviously you can use it for bandages if you need to, for first aid or self-aid. Um, so, yeah, just give you ideas for that. Or you can make charcoal off. So that's another great thing to do as well. Uh, let me see. We have... Last thing I have is steel wool. Steel wool, now, there are many videos on YouTube how to fire start with... Um, uh, 9 volt battery, most people do it with 9 volt battery, but you can do it with a, uh, two 1.5 volt batteries to make a 3 volt. Um, so look on YouTube or look on the internet, ask the bro Google to show you how to do that, and he will show you how to do that. Um, but yeah, just ask the bro Google or YouTube, and you'll find it. Um, steel wool, you can't go wrong. And it can be used for cleaning, um, if, if you carry guns, or any type of hunting um, equipment, or you can use it to clean your pots and pans of just steel or metal in general. Um, you can use it for improvised ball snacks if you have hunting rifles and such, hunting shotguns. If you're a hunter, you like bushcrafting, you like hunting as well, because they incorporate, um, yeah, well, some people incorporate hunting, trapping, bushcrafting into one. So if, if you're on that and you want to start alternative ways to start fire, Triple off steel wool or quadruple loft steel wool, it's great to have. Um, so that, that's basically the items I have had in mind, the reshoot. I've got a couple more, um, so if you stay with me guys, I'll just go grab them and I'll check them on this video. See you soon. Bonjour folks and welcome back. Now here are some of the items I have uh, related to cooking or storage or water storage. Um, some of these items I found for free. One was two dollars, and one was from my previous video, video three. Um, so yeah, here we go. Okay. So now we'll start with the cooking itself. Now, obviously, um, if you've seen my other video, got the dog bowl. This is a un. This one is non-heat treated. I have a couple that are heat treated in my packs, and they've been abused and. I haven't washed them out properly from my last um, day height the other uh, two weeks ago, sorry, when I was on holiday. Um, I still haven't washed them, so I haven't put them in the video for that reason, because I don't want to seem like a, a dirty, disgusting folk. But I just haven't had the time. I just came back to work uh, last week, and I just haven't had the time to clean all my kit from uh, when I was out in the bush. I was up in the Hakuri Martyrs for two days. I done. 
technically not legal overnight. Um, but it was it was fine. It was great. Um, enjoyed it up there. I didn't go open fire this time. I used a backpacker stove, unfortunately. Um, I would prefer fire though. Open fire, open fire cooking. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. So traditional. Um, and yeah, you don't have to pay for gas. I mean, you don't have to pay for fuel. You don't have to pay for tinder. Everything's there. All you need is a fire starter. All the, everything's in the woods. So yeah, we know the dog bowl from my previous video or videos. Now this, this was actually given to me by my, my old man, my father. Um, it's a two-piece nesting cook pot set. Stainless steel. Nests all together quite compactly. It's got the butterfly handles on it for your handles. Um, it's plastic, it's um, plastic coated handles. So you can cook on top of the open fire like that and such. Um, but it still has space in the pot itself so you can check um, food items if you wanted to or your fire starting kit in there directly or have some tinder in there, some tinder bundles and stuff um, dry combustibles you want to use for your tinder sauce or for starting the fire you can chuck them in the pot or you can, as I said, you can chuck food food in like noodles, anything like that um, and that's great to have so that's great to have and that was completely free is this a common find? No, it's not. Not not this particular style. This particular style is from the 90s, and you might be able to find them around second hand. Maybe, possibly for maximum $15. Maximum. Absolute maximum. They have these. Um, not exactly the same ones like these. Pretty much very, very similar. Um, on Trade Me, or their warehouse, or Bivouac Outdoors. You can find them places for that for under $50. Brand new. Uh, stainless steel though, so it's solid. Heaviest option, but it's great to have. Um, less fuss. Don't have to worry about the Alzheimer's treatment with aluminum, things like that. Now this, this was another great, great add to my bushcraft kit. This, I believe, is a U, uh, not United States GI style, sorry. It is a GI style. It is a military style uh, cooking pan. It's a folding cooking pan. It has a handle. Some of the but the old school um um sorry um canteen cups have these these handles exact handles like these or similar to, and they reach downwards and project downwards like that. Um, but yeah, it's a frying pan, but it's also got and it's also got sorry, a thanks. bowl. Uh, I'm not too sure of the construction of these. If anybody has any more information about these, can you please comment to me about them? Um, I believe it is stainless steel. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I have scaled the net for these. I've went to a lot of camping outdoor stores asking information about these. None of them have any um, information as such. Um, most of them recommend it could be uh, X surplus or extremely old designs of X surplus. Um, but it is a, a nesting combo as well. Fits in like that. Bam. Latches down. And it's got this weird D ring on it. I have no idea what that's used for. It may be used to um, suppress the handle down to keep it down. So that was a great find. Um, is that common? It ain't common at all. It's not. It's not going to be um, easy for the average Kiwi to find that. Um, but but you can find similar compact folding tin style or aluminum style stainless steel style um, folding metal frying pans for about twenty buck range. So you're not hurting the budget too much on that. Um, that's this is just more retro and this was free. So if it's free, it's me. Okay, so. Now to the canteen cup. Now this is a US military style GI canteen. It's a plastic canteen, unfortunately. And I just have an aluminum bottle in it at the moment, but this is the canteen cup it came with. It's um inside, if we have a look. It is lined. It's lined so it keeps your drinks hot or cold. Um, and that would usually fit snug in like that. 
I don't use this. I don't like plastic. I hate plastic. Um, a lot of the new, new style of camping equipment and military equipment, um, particularly with water bottles, are not steel anymore or aluminum or tin. Uh, I wouldn't suggest tin though. Um, but yeah, they're not stainless steel or aluminum at least. They're all plastic. I don't like it for that reason because I cannot chuck this in the fire to disinfect my water or cook in it. For that reason alone, I don't like it. Um, I can still use it to carry water, um, but I have an alternative on my left here, which I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, so I just keep an aluminum water bottle on it. If it's snug, I still have ample room for uh, water filtration straw, like a life straw or anything like that. And it's got this little pouch on the side here. You can chuck a couple tablets of water purification tablets if I needed to. Next thing, waterproof storage bag. Now it's about the size of uh, a portable handbook or notebook. Um, this was two dollars that came up. Made in China, obviously. But if you excuse me for a second, you can store dry goods in it. If you have to, you can store cooking things like um, condiments such as tea or instant coffee sachets. Um, emergency fishing supplies perhaps Pu uh, emergency water purification supplies perhaps anything you wanted to keep in a waterproof state but apart from that is actually a water container now I don't know you, you can actually see this actually got water in it I measured the water in here and it's roughly about 580 to 600 mils in this pouch and it's got a lanyard so now I can carry it have portable water if I needed to carry it to my campsite can always purify it or if I had some cold uh, disinfected water that was on the fire from the night before chuck in this pouch and I'm good to go I just need a straw I can drink straight out from the pouch dry it out later and I can use it as a pouch again but as you can see guys it is waterproof but it can also contain water this is what I'm mentioning by containers are the king they are seriously they are the king they're multifunctional. They're, they also, you can store water in it, but you can, also you want them to be waterproof as well. So it's multifunctional to prevent from getting more, um, moisture bit, um, damage or to contain water itself. I have some more few finds that I have um, had. I will check them in this soon. I'm just going to end this segment for now, but I will check them on soon. Stay with me, folks. And welcome back. Um, so now, the random items. Um, I don't know exactly where to put them in this video, so I thought I'd add them together. Um, now, firstly, let's talk about the all skin hat. Now, this is the original. Original. I will try to zoom in if I can. Show it. No, it doesn't show it, but it is an original. Trading company, or skin, or also known as waxed cotton hat. Now, this particular hat wasn't made in Australia. These are not the Australian ones. There's a, quite a few of them that are made in Australia, of the, from the Outback um, Trading Company uh, brand. This one was made in um, um memento, Oxford, Pennsylvania. Good old USA. Now this was a great find. That was completely free. Um, I got that from the old man. He gave it to me. He was given it to by one of my uncles who found it in a retro or vintage store uh, for a dollar. It was in a bargain but for a dollar. Um, now obviously the owner didn't know what an oil skin hat is. Oil skin hats and clothing are great for outdoor activities. Real great because they're completely water repellent. Um, but they are an acquired outdoor scent, let's say. They do have a certain must about them. It's quite unusual. Um, but yeah, they do They do have that unique must about them. So it's a unique scent of them. So if you can be with that mine and bush, I'm sure you're not going to have a problem. So yeah, they're 100% water repellent. Um, 
highly breathable um, you hardly sweat this one has four eyelets two on the side of each see two here and two there and that was completely free is that a common find not this particular hat or this brand but um, old hat old oil skin hats like these um, as I said they're great for outdoor activities the water repellent you provide yourself with a little uh, microscopic climate or shade um, shades always important no matter what your skin color is you want to protect your head at all times particularly in summer um, so that's good for shade um, you can also use it to fan the fire so it's great and um, yeah as I was saying anywhere the brand new ones you can find these days from um, companies such as Kakadu or Outback the guys that make these but the Australian edition ones they go up to anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks. Would I recommend you buy one? Absolutely not for that price. Try and find a, um, a second hand or well used one. You could probably ask grand folks if they're alive um, or any relatives that are quite old if they have any oil skin clothing or hats. Um, they're always great for their outdoor activities. Um, you can always use them in, in line with them. Um, um, Gore-Tex clothing, you know, the modern times to give you a dual layer of weather protection at all times. Now this, this is my current main sheath knife. Now, I made the sheath, or leather sheath itself. Um, it's the same sheet of leather I got from when I made my hatchet cover. <coughs> That's featured in one of my other videos. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, the sewing, the sewing job is not the greatest. To tell you the truth, um, I lock stitched the bottom bit. I and I stitched it. No, I think I stitched the same holes about eight times. So I went over it eight times. I uh, super glued it. Uh, the welts, the inside welts. Um, most designs incorporate a one piece belt loop into it that folds over here, goes back in, and then sewn back in. I chose not to do that route. Um, I, the reason was because I had some spare scrap leather that I made a couple belt loops with. All I've done here is I've added some, I'll try zoom, some small eyelets, screws and eyelets. These are uh, zirconium steel ones. Um, they cost me 20 cents each, um, or 10 for, I think it was 10 for like $2.50 or something like that. Um, at David's Emporium, it was a great find. Um, so yeah, um, you can make sheaths yourself, you just really need a, if you want to do it super budget, as the video series mentions, you want to use um, a nail a hammer or some sort of heavy implement you can drive the nail through the leather and just some normal sewing thread and some super glue that's basically all you need um, trace your pattern around your knife cut it out um, there are a couple of videos and instructional PDFs on the such on YouTube and the bro Google if you type in how to make a leather sheath for your knife I'm sure the bro Google will fill you in on details on that. Um, but it's not hard to take, uh, to do. It took me quite a while to do this sheath. It took me two hours because I was messing around a bit and I had to wait for the super glue to dry properly enough so I could handle it. Now I let it cure for another 24 hours and it stayed in shape. Um, I've had this so far for about a month. I've used it twice in the bush. As I mentioned before, I was in the Hakuri Matas for two days. I went down and went for a walk about in the Tararua Ranges, which are sort of near Wellington. Um, just a quick day hike. Used it a couple times. Um, yeah, it was pretty great. Now, the knife itself. Let's talk about the knife itself. Old Hickory Butcher's Knife. These in America, thirteen dollars, thirteen dollars. In New Zealand, forty dollars. Um, <clears throat> what I consider this an average Kiwi's 
knife. Yes, absolutely. Because the money, the value, and the quality of the knife. The only problem with these knives are the handles. The handles do have a tendency to come off. But there's plenty of other ways. You can wrap it in paracord. You can wrap it in duct tape. You can wrap it in some sort of um, padded uh, material so it gives you a nice firm hold grip of your knife. 1095 high carbon steel, old hickory, flat grind. It's a flat grind. Um, I've just honed it quite a few times. Um, you can probably see some darkening spots on it. Um, I've used it on a possum. I snared a possum the other week, sorry. Uh, just thought I'd try out my snaring skills. Um, ran a basic trap line. Um, and it worked. I caught one. I was bloody enthusiastic about that, let's say. So enthusiastic about that. Um, so yeah, and I skinned it just to practice my skills. I do actually work in a butchery. Um, so that has helped me to some extent. Um, and it's given a, a nice patina. Um, patinas are great. They're great for rust protection on your knife. I don't know if there's any scientific evidence to prove that. Um, but a mini bushcraft has a mini... Uh, users, end users of um, knives, particularly high carbon steel knives, find that the, the patina on the knife does actually help prevent rust corrosion to some degree, to some degree. Um, so yeah, 40 bucks, 7 inch high carbon steel, 1095, sorry. 40 dollars off trade me, um, great knife to have. I have done a little, a little bit, a teeny bit, not a lot, a teeny bit of batoning with this knife. Um, it has been recommended by a lot of people not to use this for batoning wood um, but you can do um, some basic wood crafting some basic um, notches um, and cuts with these on wood crafting uh, with your bush crafting um, but you can't do fine intricate work if you want to do a handle or anything like that a basic handle here yeah. an intricate detailed carved um, handle no um, but for ten ninety five, I can't even sell forty dollars. Can't go wrong. So those well, are my that's ads. It, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, See so yeah, if anybody's got any <coughs> any clues about that square metal frying pan that I showed you, the nesting one. Can you please give me some info? Just send me a comment or something like that. Any information regarding that? I've scoured the web. I've asked to borrow Google. Went to a lot of outdoor stores. Nobody knows anything about it. Um, it is obviously metal, obviously aluminum or stainless steel. Um, but I'd like to know some more information. So if anybody can help me out in that regard, I'll be thankful. Um, so yeah, just some of the finds I found were obviously not common stuff you're going to find. It's not going to be common for the average carry who wants to build in a bushcraft kit or send you hours ish kit. Um, a lot of these are quite retro items. Um, unfortunately, it's just going to have to be the path you're going to have to go down um, because a lot of time outdoor equipment these days is incredibly expensive. And this video series is about being super budget, super budget bushcraft. So it's it's taking the bare basics and trying to get maximise uh, it. Hope to see you guys again soon. Um, I should be doing another video within the next month. I'm hoping. Uh, here's hoping. Uh, as I am back at work, so it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I'll try to do my best, and if I find any more, anything more, uh, new equipment or new gear that I've tested, I'll put it on the next video and see you shortly in the video series. Take care, and I'll see you later. This is Kiss Brown Hick. Signing